Hello, 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 and good evening, Stamping Friends. How is everyone today? Hello and welcome to me and come join me in the craft room, you guys. I am Caron Bailey, your ATX independent, uh, ATX Stampin' Lady here in Austin, Texas, and I'm coming to you tonight with our Technique Tuesday. Okay, so the technique that we are going to be working on today, it's kind of a fancy fold, but it's a technique as well. It's what it's called. I got the idea from Split Coat Stampers. This is where I get some of my ideas. Techniques, folds, everything that may be new to me. I check out over there and learn something new, and I come and I share it with you here. If you are watching me tonight, just comment, please let me know where you're watching me from. I want if you can hear me and hopefully there's no rever reverb. I've been getting a lot of reverb lately. So let me know if you can hear me and that there's no issues going on with my sound. I really would appreciate that. If you are new to my channel, you guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for popping in. I know you have your choice of so many other demonstrators, so many other crafters that you can be watching. And yet you are choosing to spend an hour or so with me. And I truly am grateful for that. And I thank you for blessing me with your presence and your company. If you've been with me before and you know what we're all about, y'all, get ready and let's get ready to craft all right you guys if you saw in the preview or the thumbnail of the video um i kind of let you know what um the measurements were what your supplies were so i hope you have all of that but i'll recapture all of that for you just so you can be aware um, of everything that we are working with tonight all right, so in the top screen, you'll see our host code. What, why do I have my host code there? If there's a product that you see that I'm using tonight, that let me put this here so block the little glare of my, um, my overhead light. If there's any products that you see that I use tonight um, that you would love to have and you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love for you if you shop in my online store. If you shop in my online store and you um, spend $149 or less, please use the host code. It's posted in the top left. Um, um, if you are going to place an order with me and it is over $150, I ask that you don't that you call me or you message me, and in that way I can help you get the most bang for your buck with um, Hostess Rewards. All right, let me share with you first the products that we are going to be using tonight. And there's quite a bit. First, we're gonna be using from the new catalog, the, Jan the January through April mini. I'm gonna be working with the Stippled Roses uh, bundle. It is a stamp and die bundle. Um, it can be found on, hold on. It is found on page 64 of the annual catalog. I'm sorry, the January through April um, catalog. And most, if not all, of the dies can be cut out using the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. It is kind of a distinctive stamp. We don't call it distinctive. I don't see the, 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 um, the little emblem for distinctive. But it's kind of distinctive to me um, in terms of how, you, uh, the, how it's stamped. But I do love the bundle. It is um, eight dies. The largest die in the bundle is two and seven eighth inches by four and a quarter. And then we have the stamp set. And there are, um, I'll show you how many uh, pieces in that. There's seven stamps cling mounted. And this is a $54 set. <coughs> Excuse me. If you purchase it. Um, as a bundle. You don't have to purchase it as a bundle. You can, of course, purchase it individually. Now, 
we are in the middle of celebration and you guys there is a coordinate there's coordinating designer series paper in the celebration catalog and we're going to be using that tonight as well so this can be found on page eight of the catalog it's called the softly stippled designer series paper it is a 12 by 12 it is absolutely gorgeous y'all it is a 12 by 12 uh double-sided print pattern and it is gorgeous all right so let's get started so in addition to this the this stamp set we are going to be using i think i'm going to use the uh sentiment from um inked and tiled and inked and tiled is in the annual catalog i did not check the page number for that but let me grab my catalog and let me tell you what page that's on HIJK. it is on page 95 of the annual catalog right here and this comes with a um a punch it is a punched bundle hey cheryl how are you oh you are okay I'll, i have to check out your blog to see if there's um any other ideas that i can snag from you cheryl said um that's on her blog this week working with the um stippled roses bundle i'm sorry yeah the stippled roses bundle but anyway the, we're gonna grab our sentiment <coughs> excuse me from our inked and tiled and again that's on page 95 <clears throat> of the annual catalog now the other thing that i am going to be using um is the if and i took it somewhere thank goodness i'm going to be using the deckled circles um dies y'all I keep telling y'all, the more I try to be prepared for y'all, the worse off I am. I'm never prepared. I put things down all over the place. <clears throat> I believe the deckled, um, the deckled circles is part of the um, online exclusives because I don't see it in any one of the catalogs. Anyway, guys, let's get started because I am totally excited to start with us today. If you take a look at the thumbnail, you'll see that we're gonna need, here's what we're gonna need. And I've gone ahead and I've done a lot of the prep work for y'all, okay? So we're gonna need a piece of basic white, I'm sorry, of, of cardstock, and this is our card base. And I chose to go with Pool Party as my card base. And this is cut at four and a quarter by 11, okay? I didn't score it, because we're gonna score that together. All right? And so all of the measurements are in the thumbnail again. <clears throat> so this is from the deckled circled deckle. Oh, look at that right there. I have to cover that glare. This is from the deckled circle bundle, uh, a die set. This is the fourth from the smallest. And then for the matte layer, I went the fifth from the smallest. Okay. So that's what we're going to have with that. And then I wrote my measurements down somewhere. So we're going to need two pieces of designer series paper. You can cut it from the same or not. And we're going to need two pieces that's seven eighths, seven eighths by four and a quarter. We're going to need the matte layer, which I did in Lost Lagoon. That's three quarters of an inch by four. I'm sorry, I got it. I got it uh, confused. For DSP, it's three quarters of an inch by four, and the matte layer in Lost Lagoon is going to be seven eighths by four and a quarter. On one of the uh, matte layers in Pool Party, we're going to need another piece that is. Hmm, one inch by four and a quarter. I didn't think, I don't think I did that right. Sorry, y'all. This is four and an eighth. 
like something didn't look right there right and let me make sure I'm telling you the right numbers that is correct this is four and one eighth right so our math mat layer is four and by an eighth so two of them that's seven eighth inches by four and one eighth designer series paper that's three quarters of an inch by four inches and then we're going to need another piece of pool party in this case that's going to be um, one inch by four and a quarter so you see the three layers on this one okay so that's where that's going to be I've already attached them so we save a little bit of time tonight we're also going to need a piece of designer series paper that's one inch, two of them, one inch by four inches. And we have our Lost Lagoon layer that's one and one eighth by four and one eighth. We're also going to need one piece of uh, designer series of um, designer series paper that's one and one half by four inches. And then we're going to have a matte layer that is. Um, one and five eighths by four and five eighths. Our sentiment we're going to need for the inside of our card, we're going to need a piece of Lost Lagoon that is three and three eighths by four and one eighth. Is that right? Lord have mercy, that is correct. Three and three eighths. by four and three eighths, that's correct, right? I got my, I don't know why I didn't write things down, right? Three and three eighths by four and one eighths, that's correct. And then we're gonna need a piece of basic white that mats on the inside of that, that's three and one quarter by four inches. And that's all the card stack we're going to need right now, okay? Unless you decide to do, um, which we're, we are going to do, some scraps for uh, sentiment or images, okay? So let's grab our card base. Let's put everything aside for now. And the, the other important tool that we're gonna need is a scoreboard. Now I'm bringing out the Stampin' Up! scoreboard. It's just easier. If you have the trimmer, you can use the trimmer. Um, but you don't have to have this scoreboard although it is a beautiful thing. And we're gonna layer this. And we're gonna just get to, to, um, to scoring. Now the first, first score is one quarter of an inch. So one quarter, and we're gonna score on the quarter inch. We need a score that's one and a half. We need one at three and one quarter, and four and a half, and five and a half. So again, those score lines are, we need one at the quarter inch, inch and a half, three and a quarter, four and a half, and five and a half, okay? Now the fun begins. The hard part is remembering all of the scores and the measurements, but you guys, once, once you've got that done, doing this card is fairly easy. Now I got a little bit of rough edges, which means I probably need to clean my track and change my blade. So I'm gonna just clean this up just a little bit. All right. So now I'm gonna need my scoring tool. So here's how this works. Now, when I talk about folds, when you make your score line, you'll see that you've created a groove, right? So we call that a valley, right? And the other side is a mountain because it's raised. <coughs> <coughs> oh, 
<coughs> excuse me. So when I use the term mountains and valleys, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So if I say fold towards the mountain, that means I want you to fold it towards the raised side. If I want you to fold it towards the valley, then I want you to fold it towards the valley side, the depressed side, okay? So the first core we're gonna make on the five and a half, and we're gonna make that as a valley, a mountain fold. So we're gonna fold that towards our mountain, okay? Make sure that our lines are lined up, and we're gonna burnish our fold. Now, yes, we scored, but we always still wanna just take that little extra time and make sure everything measures up. Okay, now we're gonna take the, va the next fold, which would be our four and a half fold, and we're gonna fold that towards the valley. So we have mountain, valley, and again, making sure everything lines up, we're gonna burnish that. The next two lines are gonna be mountain, so we're gonna go mountain, mountain, and then we're gonna go towards the valley with the last, okay? Now you gotta be very careful with this one because it's so tiny, so narrow, and then we're gonna burnish that fold, okay? So again, just to reiterate on the folds, we start at the five and a half, and the five and a half we went mountain, valley, mountain, mountain, and then valley. So those are our folds, okay? All right, so now that we're done with that, let's get ready to make this card. I prefer to use liquid glue if you have a pre preference for um, for tape, use tape. I prefer to use liquid adhesive. So we're gonna add some glue on that fold between the four and a half and the five and a half, and we're gonna seal. We're gonna seal that. Okay. Apply just a little bit of burnishing to get that in place and sealed. And then this is where we're going to add, start adding our matted paper. So the first thing I want to add is my DSP. This is one of the 7 8 inch pieces that, but it's the one that has the two, the, the double mat layer. Okay. So this is the one that will be matted with the Lost Lagoon and the Pool Party, okay? Now, this is the only piece in this process right now that we are going to add dimensionals. And why are we adding dimensionals here? This is going to be our stop that will help us to create our bay window, our bay window, okay? I use I use foam sheets a lot. Yeah, that's my weakness right there. Now, if you're using designer series paper that is uh, directional, you just need to pay attention to that ty those types of things to make sure that when you line it up, everything is in the direction that you want for it, that it needs to be going in. Okay. Grab my take your pick tool. Now, if you'll recall from our measurements, this pool party piece is four and a half, I'm sorry, four and a quarter in length. 
which means that it should line up perfectly with your card base, which is also four and a quarter, okay? So let's get to lining that up. And just very carefully make sure you've got one edge. And I line it up, I stand it up, that way I can see. And there we go. So that's our first. So what, what you've just done is you've created your bay window. This little piece right here is going to end up going right under here to create your bay, your window. Okay? So it's going to end up going right under here to your little stop and creating your bay window. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and add our pieces. Now the designer series paper that I used, like I said, was the, uh, I think it was the stippled roses. I can't remember the name, softly um, stippled, I think is what it's called. I love this technique that I've learned so far. I think it's, it's going to create a beautiful cord. And I've only used the reverse side of the DSP. So this is the back side of this, okay? Now, the beautiful thing about Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper is that they are meant to coordinate with each other. They have uh, Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper has like a quote-unquote a busier side, a more printed side, and then the reverse side is more subtle and neutral which is what this is now this is definitely a wild wheat <laughs> and I, I for whatever reason I, I love all of the new in colors but I absolutely adore wild wheat Now, in this tip for this process or this this tech, this card for me anyway, is it's easier for me to lay it down in place to make sure that I'm lining everything up. Okay. And y'all, the card base, for all intents and purposes, not including our inside, is complete. Okay. All right. And there you have our bay. There you have our bay window right there. Isn't that pretty? Just like that, it's pretty. So let's go finish our card, okay? Um, let's grab our, the inside because this is what's gonna go on the inside. This is where we're gonna stamp our little sentiment. And I think I just want to, we're gonna stamp this guy three times. And it's the technique that we're gonna use that's gonna be a little different. So we need to grab our pool party ink our Lost Lagoon ink and our Wild Wheat. Okay, so we're gonna stamp with Lost Lagoon. I'm sorry, or with our um, pool party. We're gonna stamp this guy full force all over, and then I did not. Oh, where am I? Mm. Here we go. Sorry. I know I used. Here we go. So we're going to go in with one of our uh, sponge daubers. And I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight with the Lost Lagoon. I'm just gonna dab that color in. And 
and it's always easier to start with your darkest color your lightest color right and then I'm gonna grab oh, where's my dauber for and then we're gonna add our wild wheat I'm gonna do a little huffing. We're gonna stamp it full strength on here. Get that beautiful rose. And then we're gonna do our second generation um, right about here. Okay. We just want a hint of that. We're going to put that on the inside. We're going to start all over. Let's clean that off just a tad. And even though we're going to reuse the colors, uh, because it's dark on here, we just want to go ahead and clean that off to make sure we don't contaminate our lightest ink pad, OK? Make sure take some of the dampness out and we're going to do that process one more time pool party put that away lost lagoon And lastly, wild wheat. Okay. And because this is a, um, a dye-based ink, we're going to huff on it to activate the moisture. And I think I'm going to... Let's just put it on here. I'm trying to make sure that I have enough room. Let's just stamp it off on something else. Here we go. And then I'm going to just stamp it on this one as well. Just a little bit off. Hmm. Just a little bit off. I don't want the leaves going on the inside. Right? All right. So we're going to die cut these. But before we do that, we're going to stamp from the inked and tiled bundle our sentiment. I think we just want to say, do I need, I need some birthday cards. So I'm going to do happy birthday. I need birthday cards. Who doesn't need birthday cards? All right. And I'm going to use my embossing buddy. And I'm going to go in with, uh, some embossing ink. And I'm going, oh, I see color on here. It means I didn't clean my stamp before I put it away. Sorry. Let me clean that up. And in that case, it was very important that I clean it up because I was using uh, my clear embossing ink and I just didn't want to contaminate that ink pad with any colored ink. Okay. So here we go. And we're going to 
add some embossing ink. Make sure it's all inked up nicely. Now the beauty about a circle, <laughs> right, is that it's always going to be even, right? All right. Let's put that aside. And we're going to stamp our sentiment um, right here. Okay. And we're going to use our gold embossing powder. Make sure we're, we've got good coverage here. Yeah, we do. And then add our embossing powder. And then we'll go ahead and put this card to bed, y'all. Get the heat embossing tool, heat, em, heat tool, heat gun warmed up. Let me put this aside while that's doing that. So I normally do a uh, double heat emboss technique when I'm using clear ink, uh, clear embossing powder. I'm finding it doesn't quite work as well when I use colored. So I probably would not do that again with colored, okay? But I like it. It's going to serve like a, it's going to be like a little splotch, <laughs> right? So we know that we're going to put this guy right on here like so, okay? Now let's go ahead, grab that die, and let's die cut our two mini roses and get this card together. Love, love, love the mini cut and emboss machine, you guys. Especially when I'm uh, stamping in small quarters. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome tool. All right, so for this, we will need uh, the base plate, base plate number one. We'll need number two. And we'll need two number two plates, okay? That's all we need to die cut this image, these uh, flowers. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the tips, if you have the mini cut and emboss machine, is to um, elevate or step your uh, plates up. Um, that way, it how it feeds through the machine, it'll be like a sandwich. So the top plate will be even with the bottom plate. And this, um, the second plate, it'll be a little bit um, rever uh, in indented. That's the word I'm looking for, indented. All right, here we go. Let's see how fast we can get through this and get this done.
All right, that's our first one. And then we'll die cut our second small rose. Let's put this in here. Now the beauty of how we added our ink and our color to our stamp is that we're able to get like a gradation of color without actually blending or ink having to ink a blend. Although you could have done it that way. It's just another way of adding color. That's okay, Becca. Thanks for popping in anyway. <laughs> Thanks for popping in anyway. So here we have both of our uh, dyes, our roses already cut. And then we're just going to go ahead and finish putting this card together, y'all. All right. So the first thing is we're going to get the inside done. And this is just an eighth inch of a board, and one eighth inch border, so there shouldn't be that much play around. And let's add this to the inside of our card. I prefer liquid glue again because it gives me just a little bit more time that I can make sure that I line everything up as evenly as possible. <laughs> How was your day? Okay. So here we have our inside portion. Just for us to put a little sentiment, we stamped a little bit of a rose. That's our second generation. Here we've created our bay element, just like so, and we have our bay window. Okay. Now we're just going to get this all squared away here this will fit in a standard a2 card and so what i want to make sure i do is to make sure ah i don't want to completely um I don't want to completely obliterate that uh, that rose that we stamped, although we probably will. All right, I think one will be like this. I think that's exactly how this is going to work, okay? So one of these, we are just gonna layer on there like so. Make sure it's on there. We're not covering up our happy from our happy birthday. And then the other, we can bring like this, but we're gonna pop that up. Uh, maybe not. We're gonna add this one right here under the birthday, like that. Perfect. Then we're gonna adhere it to our mat, like so. And then we're going to add dimensionals. Now, just to make sure that we don't mess up, 
and by we I mean me, haha. <laughs> I'm gonna put my dimensional right here, right? And I'm gonna cut it to a size that I know will never be bigger than this guy, right? And then knowing that we have our rows that we don't want it to come off, that'll kind of give us an idea as to where I'm going to place um, my dimensional, okay? Because we only want it to be here. You guys, this is simple enough and beautiful enough. We really don't need to add any sort of gem or um, anything. I mean, this is already beautiful as it is. What do you think? Let me turn this off. Can you see it? And here's our bay window card. What do you think? <clears throat> well, I went ahead and I had previously made one. I don't normally make them ahead of time. But let me share you. This is also from this, the uh, Stippled Roses bundle. I used more. The colors I used in this one um, were Calypso Coral. Flirty Flamingo, I'm sorry, Calypso Coral, Flirty Flamingo, uh, Pebbled Path, and um, Wild Wheat. Those, that's the color scheme in that one. Okay, so here's the second one. Or here's our sample. And there you go. I love this card. I think it's very beautiful. Um, this is probably going to be a Mother's Day kind. This is like a Mother's Day kind of card, right? Look at this. I am loving this fold and this technique. You guys, I'm going to put a link in our, our my description box that if you do decide to make this, you can share it with me on my Facebook page or on my Pinterest page. And and while while I'm at I'm talking to you about this, I don't know why that disappears. Um if you would love to reach out to me, I'm looking to have, grow my team, looking to grow my base, people that I stamp with. If you'd like to reach out to me, don't forget, here's my information. Email me at sweetsignatures at gmail.com. Join my team and you guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I love bringing you content. I'm trying to come to you more this year in 2024. Right now, it's looking mostly like uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays. We do mystery stamping on the last Sunday of the month. We do a kit together, which is a... Thank you, Jackie. We do our kit together event, which is the last Friday of every month. And it is an invitation only Zoom event. And I invite you and encourage you to participate. Reach out to me um, for any of those information, okay? I love this card. I'm, I'm, I'm just absolutely in love with this card. Uh -huh. Well, I hope you like it. Um, I have a giveaway. Sorry. So the giveaway for my Sunday um, event, when we did Roll of the Die on Sunday, I had a commenter that earned this. I believe her name was Debbie. Debbie, if you are watching, reach out to me. So I can get you um, your prize. You won the card that we created on Sunday uh, with, with our roll of the die event. Okay. So reach out to me, Debbie. I'll tag you and um, definitely let me know how I can get you this card. You guys, thanks for joining me to get today. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you are coming back, I will see you on Thursday when we case the caddy. If you have any ideas and you have the catalog, 
at the, my email address on my Facebook page and just go through the catalog and say, hey, I wanna see you create X, Y, and Z. And if I have that bundle, that stamp, I will go ahead and recreate, schedule that for you so we can create that. On that note, you guys, again, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for spending about 48 minutes with me and I will see you on the next one. Happy stamping.